morning happy wednesday to you uh, a little bit later getting on uh line today so sorry about that hope that this finds you though and hope that this encourages you as a disciple of jesus christ this morning i want to look at one verse mark chapter 14 verse 62 uh, in context jesus has been arrested and he's facing the sanhedrin uh, which was a, uh, a body in within the Judaism uh, it was a, it was a religious legal body uh, and Jesus was uh, being brought before them in a trial uh, he had been accused of blasphemy he had been accused of uh, making himself equal with God and so the high priest and uh, and and his cohorts are are interrogating Jesus and uh, obviously Jesus is not co being very cooperative they're asking questions and Jesus is keeping silent and uh, an and exasperation in verse 61 the high priest asked him are you the Christ the son of the blessed uh, and Jesus responds in verse 62 he says Jesus said I am and you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven that phrase, I am, is really important. Uh, it's the, the Greek uh, phrase, ego, I me. It, it literally means I am. But now what was so, um, so interesting about that? I noticed the reaction of the high priest, verse 63, uh, when he says, then the high priest tore his clothes. What further need do we have of witnesses? Uh, you, you know, basically he's saying we have, he said it right there. He makes himself equal with God. Now, obviously we can infer when Jesus, Jesus answers the question, I am, he's saying, are you the Christ, the Son of God? And he's simply saying, I am. And then he's saying, and you'll see the Son of Man, which was, a, again, a favorite of, of designation, Jesus of himself, Son of Man. And we might conclude that the high priest was responding to uh, that. But really, there's something deeper than that. You see, the, the phrase, ego and me, I am, is, is, is a theologically rich expression. Uh, if you remember... <laughs> Back in uh, in 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 in, in the um, Old Testament, when Moses was out in the wilderness and he saw the burning bush, you know he comes and draws near, and that's when God begins to speak to him about going back and being the deliverer to lead his people out of Egypt, and and you know Moses says, well, who will I tell him sent me? And God says, I am that I am. Uh, so when Jesus used that phrase, I am, it's a very clear expression of his divinity. He is, he is making himself equal with God. The high priest got it right. Uh, Jesus is exactly what Jesus was doing. Uh, the Gospel of John uses that phrase, ego, and me quite a bit. When Jesus, I am the, the true vine, I am the good shepherd. All those I am statements in John are clear references by Jesus to his divinity. Uh, Jesus is declaring him himself to be God. Uh, and so, uh, you know, here we, we, when we think about that as uh, disciples of Jesus, it, it helps us to understand exactly the nature of who Jesus was. Now, again, it gets into some very uh, interesting theological discussion because while Jesus was a hundred percent God, uh, here obviously this is this text is very much uh, making that claim, uh, but he was a hundred percent man at the same time. Uh, you know, the writer, you know, Paul in Philippians tells us that God, Jesus didn't think anything, didn't think equality with God was something to be grasped a hold of or held on to, but he humbled himself. He emptied himself and came in the form of a man. Uh, Jesus was fully man as he walked on earth. He was as human as you and I and experienced life as a human. However, he was still divine. He was still 100% God. I know 100% plus 100% equals 200%, not 100%, but you see, there's the mystery of God. God, you know, at the same time, Jesus was divine and human. Um, you know, uh, so here, the thing that I want to encourage you today and myself as a disciple of Jesus, Jesus is exactly who he said he was. He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And if that is true, what should that elicit from us? Well, first and primary, worship. You know, we should worship Jesus because he is God. But second, we should obey him. You know, and I don't know about you, but uh, obedience is a tricky thing for us humans. Uh, you know, we typically uh, struggle with keeping Jesus's commands. You know, it's interesting uh, in Matthew 28, the Great Commission, you know, we're supposed to make disciples, teaching them to observe all that Jesus commanded. 
And unfortunately, ob observing all that Jesus, is, Jesus commanded can be tricky for us. Uh, you know, some days we're better at it than others. That's why we require grace. But you see, I think today for me, reflecting on the fact that Jesus is God, you know, Jesus wasn't just some mere religious figure who came and, and, and taught us some wonderful things about the nature and purpose of God. He wasn't a, a great rabbi who, uh, you know, revealed to us a pathway to know God. Jesus is God. And so when Jesus speaks, he carries a level of authority that, uh, that we should uh, quickly acknowledge and quickly come underneath. Now, I want to be clear here. You know, uh, obedience to Jesus' commands and, and doing so in a growing manner is a mark of a true disciple of Jesus Christ. You know, it's not enough to just have a, a, a right belief about Jesus. See, I can believe orthodox uh, doctrine that Jesus is in fact God. I can look at this passage and say that, yeah, I believe because Jesus said, ego on me, that Jesus is Lord. But does that belief function in my life as, as coming underneath his authority? authority and obeying what he said. Uh, see, that's where the rubber hits the road as a disciple. You know, uh, our works of, of belief, and I want to be clear again here, you know, uh, our, our, our works don't save us, but because we are followers of Jesus, works should naturally follow our faith. You know, our faith is in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Our faith is in the fact that Jesus is exactly who he says he is. But then the works of the kingdom begin to flow out of our lives because we do believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And because we believe in the finished work of the cross. So today, for me, uh, I want to increasingly come under the authority of Jesus. And I want to invite you to do the same thing. You know, what are the areas of your life that you're struggling uh, with obeying Jesus? You know, think about the commands of Jesus in Scripture to, to, to love God with everything that we have in us and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Are you growing? Am I growing in my love for God? And is my heart, you know, being warmed and, and my affections turned increasingly toward God and away from the things of the world? Am I loving my neighbor well? That, that's people that are outside the faith, by the way. You know, who's your neighbor? Anyone that you come across in, in your day, that's your neighbor. Are you loving those people well? Are you showing them the love of Christ? Can they see Christ in you? You know, uh, am I, you know, the great commandment, uh, I mean, am I, am I, well, that's the great commandment, the great commission. Am I making disciples? Am I intentionally building relationships with unbelievers so that God can use me to draw people to Christ? Am I actively living a missional life, declaring the, the excellency of Jesus Christ and what he's done in my life so that people are seeing Christ in me and being drawn to him? Um, am I coming under the new commandment that, you know, when Jesus said, I tell you to love one another and by doing so people will know that you're my disciples. Are you loving the people in the, in your church that, you know, the, the, the Christians that God has placed around you to help you grow? Are we loving one another with a love that, that communicates that we are Jesus's disciples? You know, are we doing those things? Are we, are we, are we obeying Jesus's commands? You know, what areas do you and I need to shore it up today? You know, let's ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us those, those gaps in our obedience. And let's, let's bring our sin to the Father. See, that's the beauty of it. You know, God already knows about those areas that we're struggling in. He already knows about our sin. And he invites us to bring those, those sins to him and, and receive the grace that he's poured out upon us at Calvary. So God's not going to reject you or I when we come to him and we come clean. You know, he's going to say, my child already knew about it, but now because you have humbled yourself and you've come in with a repentant heart, I'm going to give you the strength to walk away from it. So today, let's, let's try to live an empowered life that, that is increasingly looking more and more like Jesus. You know, let's not just believe that Jesus is God. Let's not just believe that ego of me identifies him as God. Let's let that phrase, ego of me, I am, be a declaration to us that he is God. And because he is God, we are going to worship him and we're going to obey him. Would you pray with me?
Father, I thank you so much for your word today. And, and I just pray, God, that you would help us to grow in our obedience to you today. Lord, I, I come to you right now and I humble myself. And you know my heart, God. You know that I am a sinner. I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. I have raised my own desires upon, uh, above yours. I've, I've, I've allowed my flesh, Lord, to dictate my action rather than my faith in you and the finished work. And God, I come to you and I ask forgiveness. I ask that, that God, you would just uh, apply more and more grace to my life so that increasingly I'm walking away from my flesh and I am walking under your authority. You are God, Jesus. You are exactly who you said you were. And God, you have done exactly what you said you were going to do. And I just pray, Lord, that you would increase my faith so that increasingly obedience is flowing out of my life rather than following after the things of my flesh. I thank you, God, for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. And I just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you today. And my prayer for you is that today you uh, come before God with a repentant heart. And those areas that you're struggling to uh, do whatsoever, he commanded you that today you will commit your heart to him in those areas and you'll see the victory that only Jesus can bring. God bless you guys and I hope you have a great Wednesday.